Let's take a look at the unemployment problem, the real one here in the United States today. First, the facts. In 2007, when this Great Recession began, the unemployment in this country was counted as 7 million adult men and women looking for work and unable to find it. Today we have 15 million. It's gotten straight out worse and it has stayed worse. We haven't begun to solve the problem. The Bureau of Labor Statistics in Washington, which keeps the best records of unemployment, they have a special number called U-6, what they think of as the real count of unemployed. It adds together three groups of people. The adults looking for work who can't find it, those 15 million I just mentioned. But they add two other groups to that. They add the people who have a part-time job but really want a full-time job and can't find one. There are millions of those in America and their inability to work the full time that they need is a kind of unemployment. So the Bureau of Labor Statistics adds that. And then there's a third group. They don't have any work. They've been looking for a long time, but they've given up ever finding a job. They're called by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, quote unquote, discouraged workers. Guess what? If you add together the full-time unemployed people, those who are involuntarily unemployed, and the discouraged workers, we're talking about an unemployment rate of 17% of the American workforce. More than one in six Americans without the work they need and want and we need as a society. One in six means every American family has a brother, a mother, a cousin, an uncle, somebody who's affected. Nobody escapes from an unemployment problem as vast and deep as this one. What about the social costs of unemployment? What does it mean? Well, first of all, we know from countless studies that unemployed people suffer serious blows to their self-esteem, to their sense of their personal worth, to their importance in their community, in their society. They suffer depressions, psychological and otherwise. These are enormous, lasting injuries to our society that we don't need and that we should not suffer. But it's worse than that, because the unemployed themselves are not the only ones who suffer. Talk to the spouse of an unemployed person. Talk to the children of an unemployed person, and you'll see real quickly that those folks suffer too from the stress, the strain, the unhappiness, the tension, the anxiety of the unemployed. It spreads, and you know something? It doesn't just spread to their family. It spreads to their neighbors too. Unemployed people have a hard time maintaining, for example, their house, painting it, taking care of the lawn. And when that deteriorates, so does the value of their house, but also the value of the houses in the neighborhood. You see how it spreads? The social costs of unemployment are enormous. And that brings me perhaps to the most important point. Unemployment happens in this country mostly, overwhelmingly, when a private employer, a capitalist employer, decides to fire a worker. The employer doesn't do that because he's mean or she's nasty. They do that because it's what's profitable for them. They will decide to fire a worker, for example, if they can find a cheaper worker out of the country to hire that person instead. Or if they found the new machine that is more profitable than to have the workers. Or maybe they can't sell what they produce because they're producing a poor product. Whatever it is, they think it's profitable for them to fire workers. That's when workers have lost their jobs. That's when we get unemployment. But look closely at this. The benefit to the capitalists, say, for example, of firing a worker, might be $10,000 more profit for him. But if we look at the social cost, we add up the counseling the family will need, the extra help the children will need to get through school when there's so much tension at home. When we add up all the costs, they're much greater than the benefit to the capitalist. The logical, the rational thing to do would be to say, if it's more costly to have a person unemployed than it is the benefit to the company that fires them, it shouldn't happen. That's not a rational decision. It is less costly to a society to keep people working than to suffer the costs of unemployment. That's the reality. So why do we have it? 
because the capitalist who fires the worker is not required to pay any of the costs of unemployment. The capitalist just gets the benefit of one less worker to pay for. All the social costs, the rest of us pick up. The neighbors, the spouse, the children, the friends, the relatives. And no one reimburses us. So this is a bad system. It does not properly count, and it does not make the corporations who cause unemployment have to pick up the costs of the firing decision they make. So in the end, the unemployment in our society has two key dimensions. First, it's an irrational, inefficient waste. We have side-by-side -side unemployed people, unused tools, equipment, raw materials. If we put the people who want work together with the stuff that's sitting there rusting and rotting, we would produce enormous wealth we could use to rebuild our cities, to provide wonderful facilities for us all to live in, to give homes to the people who don't have them, so on. We don't have the wealth because as a system, we can't put the unemployed into the jobs they want and that we have available. That is a problem of our system. It makes it rational for capitalists to fire, even though the costs of that unemployment are much greater than what would be the case if we kept these people working and they want to work and we need what they could produce. We need a change in a system that works in this inefficient way.